hearing is now called to order. That's what I wanted. At 6 o'clock on Tuesday, August 13th of 2019, this hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth, and that relative to the protection of the wetlands as most recently amended. Notice that the time and place of this hearing was published in the Advocate on July 18th and also on August 8th of 2019. We've had to miss a meeting or two because of the quorum. Um, persons wishing to be heard will be called in the following order. So uh, first order of business here is minutes for approval from the July 9 meeting. And I missed that meeting, but I'm guessing other people are here for it and had a chance to look and get up to make a motion to accept as presented. I'll accept that motion. I'll make the motion to accept the minutes as presented. We have a second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That's it. Unanimous. Looks like we have no meeting mail, no items for general discussion, no old business. So let's get on to new business. First is an NOI for Joshua Aruda, 148 Peckham Road. File number is SE001-0539. A notice of intent was filed by Joshua Aruda, 148 Peckham Road, map 16 lots. 7, 8, and 9 for retreat lot E. The applicant proposes to construct a single family dwelling with associated septic, septic system driveway, grading and utilities on a common drive. The applicants are represented by Jamie Bissonetta, Zenith Consulting Engineers LLC. My name is Subsurface Sewage Disposal System and New Construction, that's dated June 20th, 2019. I don't see Mr. Bissonette. Um, but perhaps, Mr. Arruda, if you wanted to say anything about the plans in front of us. This is for your, your lot. And this is what <coughs> so, uh, yes, for the record, Josh Arruda, 148 Peckham Road. Um, basically, we have a single family dwelling with um, roof drain infiltrators. Obviously not discharging roof runoff into the uh, surrounding wetland areas. Um, with the same thing with the septic system, uh, Jamie has proposed from Zena. Yeah. Um, federal legal member. Um, basically, that's all I can say. Okay. While he's doing while he's doing that, I, I, I can hold this up for the camera. So the access road would be coming in that way, Peckham Road would be over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's right, because the property comes in that way. So the blue line is the hundred foot buffer zone from the wetlands which are out here. The 50 foot buffer. The yellow is a proposed silt fence around the road. So again, Peckham's up here. Long retreat, retreat driveway this way. The septic system is over here, outside the 100 foot buffer zone. And if you're ready, you're ready. I, I was just making sure, just, oh, just so there wasn't it. dead, dead yeah, airspace. Well. No, yep, appreciate go it. For it. Uh, Jamie, this net Zenith Consultant Engineers for the record. Uh, we have a single family house with uh, associated septic system, well grading, driveway, and roof drain system uh, in front of the <clears throat> um, Some of you may remember about a year ago, we permitted a common driveway access off the of Peckham Road into the back to access three lots. Uh, this is the furthest lot in the back, known as Lot E. Um, the majority of the house is outside of the buffer along the driveway. You can see the 100 foot buffer uh, in blue. <coughs> so everything in this direction is in the buffer zone. The driveway up to this point right here has already been permitted um, and under construction. Uh, this point forward is what we're looking to do. Uh, we have the septic system here, which is greater than 100 feet uh, to the wetlands. Well, just falls just over um, into the 100 foot buffer zone itself. And then part of our st the stormwater regulations require this uh, roof drain infiltration bed. That's shown. 
On sheet two of this plan set, there's more details for product specs for the field, the tank, the infiltration chambers, etc. Um, that's really about it. Jimmy, what's, <coughs> what's in that corner there? Which corner? Up here? No, down to the, if you're facing Brown the house right on the there. left. Oh, this is the reserve area for the septic. So originally this was going to be two lots. Uh, it's one. So we have enough perks over here and over here for two separate septic systems. We just decided to put the reserve over there. But nothing's proposed to be constructed there right now. If there were, mm -hmm. you need other access? Uh, well, we're not planning on okay. putting another lot back here. Uh, I think this would be Josh's side yard. Yeah, I, I don't think, um, we don't have enough frontage to even do something like that, so it's basically unbuildable. Yeah, it's just all part of one big lot of it. And then closer to the house, the other mm -hmm. side, on the left side of the house, if you're facing it? Yeah. That's the right side of the house facing it? I see. Yes. All right. So over there is that a wall it. there? Two walls. Over here. This is a wall and this is a wall. Josh would like a walkout in this vicinity. With just grass over there, Josh, on that side. Yes. Exactly. Just the side yard. Yeah. Okay. So what's the relationship, uh, construction sequence wise, of getting the driveway done, getting the restoration areas done? Mm -hmm and getting the new houses done. Uh, sure. Well, the a lot of the restoration has been started, as I think you've, you've gone out and seen, but they're, I has believe... Been, has regrown on Has regrown. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they've neatened up some areas. they put in the erosion control, as we've talked about. Brendan Van has been out to the site, I believe, two, maybe three times? Three times. And I believe he's working with you on plantings that you have been to do some arrangement. Well, I haven't seen anything from him. Okay. You know, I mean, we did walk the property together, and I told him, no, it's not enough that to let it grow in. We sure. need some trees. Yeah, and I think you and I trust. discussed that as well. I believe right. you were going to talk yeah. to Brandon um, and have him. Brandon, um, like I said to you, Saturday was out of the country, and one of his employees did quit on him, so he's by himself. He's a little backlogged. Brandon also said that he didn't want to start planting because right now is not a planting season, August. He said he would like to see me wait until the end of September to October because obviously right, but summer. Right, we don't know what he wants to plant. What's that? But we haven't seen any plants, so we don't know what he wants to plant. Yeah, so that's, I'm waiting on, on Brandon on that. So my understanding with the construction sequences, as they're moving forward, they would they would like to be able to start construction of their house and George's house, but also understanding that Brandon's going to be working on the planting plan and keeping you in the loop from everything I've been told as to approval on that planting plan to keep you happy. So all at the same time. That was that. That's, that's the hope. Like. That's correct. There's a third lot out here that we don't have any proposal <coughs> for yet. Mm -hmm. um, kind of hoping that we have some some ability to start these two houses with the work understanding that we'll hold off on that third lot. And the third lot the is the one closest to the street. Right. Yeah. right next to George's. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on starting the uh, replication area hopefully by the end of September, October, weather permitting, obviously. Okay. We've been going through these little heat spells and, mm -hmm. you know, that's not the right time to kind of be planting uh, plants. And uh, Brandon is going to be overseeing the whole replication area. So he's okay. going to be doing inspections, soil conditions, plant inspections. So he, Brandon is overseeing the whole uh, replication area. Do we have the vegetation chosen for that? For the yes, on area? the... Um, on the original, yeah, the original set. Plant. Yeah, we spec'd out the plantings in the area plus that new one, but see looks. Should be another pages. 
should be the, I think, the third, third or fourth page. Yeah. Right? Um, whatever we added would be on this plan. I believe you and I did talk if we wanted some more plantings, so this plan would reflect that. Okay, so um, right now it's showing as for our um, replication area lurid sedge, fall meadow grass, fringed sedge, gel pipe weed, broom sedge, bull grass, bone set, tussock sedge, blue vervain. Um, that's all pretty small stuff, right? That's there. all there. Those are trees. And, okay. yeah, those are shrubs and trees. Okay, so okay. I wish we were very small as early as we could. Bush common space, but right near the. I smelled the sweet purple bush yesterday. It's my favorite smell. Flowering in my yard right now. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I think that's a real nice location for it too. When I go up there and look at it, it kind of closes off that area. It's going to have three sides of, you know, exposure to wet. Where's that exactly? Down at the turnaround. So it's it's before you get to Josh's house um, and pretty much right after George's house. It would be at the end of an emergency turnaround set off. On the left side? Yes. On the left side. Oh, no. That's right. So in terms of the trees in the area, we were talking more along. Here, here, right? Just adding some well, of those things in. Yes, yes. That, that's what we're waiting for the plan for. Right. Yeah. And, and understand Brandon's situation. All right. So, it's there. All right, so you're going back to the question that we asked you earlier on. The timing of all this is that it's all going to be kind. We would like to have some D and and the roadway to continue, uh, or D and E to start. The roadway to continue. We understand the roadway is a work in progress, um, but we're moving in the right direction with it. I think the, the limit of work barrier is very permanent with that heavy silt soil. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's. It, I think it'd be good to to get Josh in there, be able to build his house, and keep things going. We still have that third lot that right now we don't have any notice in front of you for. Um, it's kind of some good surety that, you know, Josh completes what he's looking to do, what you're looking for to do up here. Do you think you have some kind of something to say about the whole lot? Well, we're going to have to file a notice. Absolutely. Right. Right. But I mean, in, the, in between, while you're working on the other two lots. Oh, we still have the order of commission, okay. plus we'll have two more orders. So, I mean, this. I'd like to see the drainage for the, for the driveway get in. <coughs> The basin at the entrance? Yeah. yeah. Uh, drainage is more than all I have is one is one box culvert left. Mm -hmm. All of my drainage is in place. So did you construct the basin at the entrance, the big infiltration basin? That isn't good. I no. I, I had the one. culvert got put in Saturday, that 12 inch ADS pipe with the head walls got um got put on Saturday. Um that's the one close to that hammer head turnaround down. For the, excuse me? Close to the turnaround. No, oh, she's yeah. talking about there's one right at the bottom of the Four driveway. Point. Right, right. right. No, further, okay. but right before the bridge as you're coming down. So, so this this went in, you're saying, 12 inch? There's a 12 inch, yeah, that went in Saturday. So after, I, after we left. Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically the spillway has to be constructed but there's a pile of fill there that needs to get um moved when do you think you'll start working on the basin um i need to move probably a couple maybe a thousand yards of fill that's there to my lot so um time frame roughly yeah well that's part of the road part of the construction yeah. so basically soon because I want to wrap up both sides of the road, seat it, and uh, get everything kind of yeah, locked in for, you know, best planting season. And uh, the one more box culvert is at the, the closest to my house, which is left for drainage. So the first basin, you need that material from the first basin in the, in the back of your lot? Yeah, so there's that 
when you walk down the driveway, that pile of fill that's there, mm -hmm. that's for my house lot. Mm -hmm. So right, right in that area, that's where the um, overflow area is supposed to be constructed. Mm -hmm. And you, you can remember for the past, maybe it's two years now, we've been talking about, I believe, this pile of fill being used on site mm -hmm. for the constructions of this house. So that makes sense. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, we take the pile, we move it back, any spoils that he pulls out of this basin, he moves back and uses for construction. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to make a lot of sense. So that's, that's going to reflect, that'll be reflected in these new contour lines then. That well, fill that yes. moving back to what he Yeah, so these solid lines are the fill lines and the lighter dash lines are the existing yeah. lines. So yeah, he's going to need some dirt, no question. Okay. And you've got uh, Yep. Uh, yep, we pull it all the way up to the 100 foot buffer. Right. Um, again, this side of the lot goes uphill. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's more of a limit of work, you know, uh, mm -hmm. on that side because you're not going to get erosion up here. This side's definitely down gradient, so it's going to be active and pulled. Well, the good thing is it's more filling in and digging up and building that kind of but Correct. Cool. 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 Questions? I'm guessing you're not here for this one. Okay. Well, oh, yeah. You are the other girl. Um, so I'm questions? my daughter. And um, so this and isn't. For you, just for the record, for sure. your please. My name's Donna Lopes. I'm at 178 Peppermore. Okay. And um, this isn't my area of expertise, so I had Bill Madden from GAF take a look at the plans for me. Sure. And he just wrote some comments on here. Yeah. Read those, Jim. I can. Yeah. Yeah. They, they're they're they're. Read those are and address those. Sure. He. He's saying that the electric service is not shown, which is correct. We we typically don't show them on here until after approval. We sent the plans get sent out to the electric company to tell us where they're going to go. Every municipality is a little bit different on, on how that functions. Uh, how do the downspout piping? So, the rear you, you so, in terms of the electric surface, are there utility poles coming in? How's that going to happen? Um, I'm still working with Eversource. Um, I know we proposed, they're proposing telephone poles um, at least until the first uh, wetland crossing, so the first culvert, mm -hmm. and then on the uh, beyond that, I believe we're going to go underground from there. So before we start digging for that trench, you'll be notified to make sure that you're comfortable with the excavation, even though it's already in the area of work. Um, if anything, it will be on the right side of the driveway closest to the house because the left side, there is a uh, gas line already mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, let's see. It makes a note that the foundation drain pipe is above ground. Well, no, he's, he's talking about this line here. I, I'm not sure. I could talk to him about that. This pipe would run flat and have a pipe that goes up under the foundation to pitch out. But I understand how many yards of fill and truck trips. We didn't even calculate that. Um, Most of it's already outside. A lot of it is. I mean, yeah. I don't know how many more. Probably 80% of it's already on site. He is correct. We did not specify a driveway material. Do you know what you want your driveway to be? It's going to um, be gravel? The common driveway is gravel, but probably next to my house, I'm probably going to do some either concrete. Um, so you're saying up in this facility, you yeah. concrete? Yeah. What about down in here? Gravel? Um, gravel, probably gravel that area. Gravel or concrete, I don't know. <coughs> Uh, I don't know. Doesn't. Like I'm not really a asphalt person. I like concrete a little bit better. But obviously, depends what you know for cost-wise. Mm -hmm. It'd either be either or concrete or asphalt. He's asking how we will access and maintain pumping and septic tank in the rear. Uh, you park a pump truck here and run out several lanes of hose. I think my septic tank at my house is much further than that. It's weird to get it. <laughs> Uh, why is a dewatering basin required? Where is it located? 
it would have to be placed out of the 100 foot buffer and it's only for the encounter high groundwater during construction. I think that's a pretty typical detail we provide. Mm -hmm. uh, and then how do downspouts for oh, downspouts and piping from rear of house get there? I believe he's talking about the infiltration roof. Typically we would run a manifold. This is not a walkout in the back. It's a level ground so you can run a pipe at 1% yeah. and get it around to that infiltration bit. All the way around like that? Yeah, it's, not, it's actually not that bad um, running in this vicinity and tying in the end. So uh, if Josh runs into an issue, we can always split it up and put a section in the back as well. That's not a problem. That's the overall volume that we need to handle. So if Josh calls us and says the elevation is not working on this down then we'll split it into two and put something back here. But, I don't see any problem with it either way. And that's it. Oh. Yeah, he, he's met making a note that the foundation here is above ground, and it is. We always have our sort of steps down. You need an eight inch step for your lowest broadening number, the building code. Is this for you to keep? We can have that. Thank you. Oh, are those answers to your satisfaction? Any other questions, Mr. Oud or Mr. Okay. Um, just bring up another question for me then. So if this part of it's impervious, what's the plan for dealing with whatever velocity of runoff there is? Uh, that, that's a great question. Uh, as far as the overall, when, when we spoke with the planning board about the, the roadway and the access roads, we got a waiver on the stormwater to do the houses with the roofs. Mm -hmm. So we can get a waiver from the stormwater policy in town. I believe Marilyn would need that approved it as well. Correct? I have no memory of that, but that's okay. Yeah. But that being said, we've sized roof drains. Uh, these are massively sized roof drains. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have drainage for the main part of the roof as well. Um, I, I do recall the planning board who's also the stormwater commission looking at the looking at the wetlands and we've got a thousand acre or whatever it's hundreds and hundreds of acres of wetlands you know and even if you did nothing you still couldn't influence the you know you yeah i mean it's just influence the what neighboring properties it's head down into the i mean it's headland now it's, the soils are relatively tight there's out on site that's why slabs you want to grade the building there's Water hits the ground and runs. I don't know. The stuff that's on this plane, that's a separate file. This is specific yeah, that's to that. Yeah, that's the conditions that they already have. Okay. So you want to make that motion? Make a motion for this. Do we have a second? Yeah. Okay, we have any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. Now, if you want to leave, leave this, leave this handy for later. What do you want to do the second one? Well, let's just, let's just go in order. Going on it as on the thing here. Um, so next is a COC for Adam and Lisa Dean for 36 Robinson Road. It's file number SE001-0527. A certificate of compliance was filed by Adam and Lisa Dean for property located at 36 Robinson Road, map 7, lot 3A. The applicant proposed to construct a breezeway and garage. Within the minute of buffer zone of the bordering vegetative wetland. Um, so, you know, this is somewhere. Yeah. Robinson Road. So, we went out there on Saturday to the look. Yeah. I think that project is 
the one between the gain access to the yard? No, no, no that's the yard. No, there's still ends on this greenhouse. There's only not a setback and had that. The swimming pool everybody wanted to jump into because it was so stagnant. Yeah, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to go out there for that one. Um, but, you know, and I think for those of us who saw it, looks like it was, it was run in, the project was done, and it's ready for a certificate of up to I see no reason for not, not to issue that document. I make a motion to the COC for 36 Robinson Road. Do we have a second? For discussion. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain? That's unanimous. Uh, next, we have an RBA for El Dow Amaral, 16 Gulfview Road. A request for determination was followed by El Dow Amaral for properties located at 16 Gulfview Road, map 20, lot 9D. The applicant proposes to install 48 ground mounted solar panels. For a total of 14.88 kilowatts in work requests, whether the work depicted on the plan is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. The applicant is represented by Ryan Rigo of Isaacson Solar. The plan name is the Eldaro Amaral Residence. That plan is dated July 5, 2019. Floor is yours, sir. Good evening. Uh, so I'm actually Matt from Isaacson Solar. I'm standing in for Ryan, who couldn't make it today. Okay. So uh, forgive the, the last minute substitution. Can, I have a couple can copies we have your last name just, just for the record? Sure. Sly, S L Y. Thank a couple you. copies of the plans here. Just a, a small detailing if you guys want to check those out. Mm -hmm. I have a larger print out here if you guys also want to take a look at this. So, Flipping through, I don't know how many of these you guys might have seen come through, but this is within the 100 foot buffer zone of the wetlands on Eldaro and Rawls and Budding property, or property in the back, however you want to call that. But what we're using, this is going to be a 40 by 20 array. It's going to be about 11 and a half feet tall. Uh, so those are the basic dimensions. It's about 150 feet from the house. Um, but what we're using to actually mount the materials, there's no cement, there's no chemicals, there's no sort of bad materials, I guess, going into the earth here. It's going to be stainless steels, all helical piles that get, get drilled directly into the ground with a 75 year kind of warranty on those. Um, so they're kind of, they're there to stay. They're not going to corrode. They're never going to need to be replaced. Um, something like this is, is a little bit out of my area of expertise, so it's good to have all of you guys here. Uh, sorry my plans aren't quite as large as, as uh, Mr. Bissonette's, but this is what I have for you guys today. Mm -hmm. Well, you brought up an interesting comment on Saturday based on your experience with kilowatt limits for residential. It was the size of it. Yeah, is this commercial? No, this is strictly residential, single phase service. Because yours it's is fairly like 12, large, yeah. and, they, and they said yours was at the limit of... It was getting close to that limit. I know it's an AC rating. Uh, 25 kilowatts AC. Yeah. Anything larger than that is considered a commercial application. Okay. Uh, this one's actually limited at uh, 10 kilowatts AC, I believe. Of oh, 10. Let me just take a peek here. Is that 14? Yes, that's 14.88. So that's actually the DC, DC rating yeah. of the system. Oh. Um, is it the AC or? is is really all that the the power company ever source out will care about for this project. Sure. So and, and what is it AC? This is 10 kilowatts AC. Yep. So this is strictly a residential system, single phase service. It's fairly large for it is. residential. Yeah, these guys just happen to use a, a little bit of power over there. It's a larger home, a lot of central air, a lot of pools going on. So yeah, this, there's a lot of consumption here from this house. So this will actually be a, a nice reduction on their power costs. Sure. But if you guys want to take a peek, I actually have a, a copy of all the materials that we'll be using here, stating that it is stainless steel, the dimensions, the manufacturing, the helical piles, not using any sort of cement or, mm. or chemicals to mount these. It's actually a, a massive, kind of like a, almost like a cat machine that we're going to use to screw these into the ground. So it's... Yeah, what happens if you hit rock? Usually the, the piles will go right through the rock. It's not usually a big deal. If anything, we can kind of play with the, where they get mounted. So it's going to stay in the same vicinity, but we'll be able to play with those piles a little bit through them. Yeah. Hmm. We're hoping we're not going to hit too many rocks. Right, yeah. 
Who can talk to you about rocks? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> plenty of them. Oh, those are tough to go through. Oh, yeah. And I didn't. And 80 feet away from the wetland flag, flag line. Correct. And, and it's interesting that back there there's actually a swale. Mm -hmm. So that's helpful as well. And you said it's going to be drilling in. There's really no excavating going on, correct? Right? No. I mean, any sort of excavating that did take place, we would, we would obviously backfill with the same material. We're not bringing in any outside materials for that. Okay. If that scope does change, mm -hmm. will you notify us of that? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't know what you're going to encounter there yet. Right. It's very rare that we would have to move a system unless we hit some sort of a, a monstrous boulder. Mm -hmm. But if that was to happen, it's definitely something that we would run by you guys. Are you here for anything? For the things that did anybody want to comment or ask any questions? Uh, anybody in the commission with further questions? All right, in that case, I'll entertain a motion for a negative determination for this project. I make a motion for a negative determination. Yeah, sir. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstaining? That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next one is a COC for Chad and Tiffany Almeida. 36 Beaut Street, uh, SC, file number SC001-0072. Our certificate of compliance was filed by Chad and Tiffany Almeida for property located at 36 Beaut Street, map 25, lot 10 U. The applicant proposed to construct a single family dwelling, grading and utilities as part of a larger subdivision. It's called Buttonwood Meadows, Buttonwood something or other. Yeah. Plan name is As Built Foundation Plan. That's dated December 31, 1996. This one's been sitting for a while. Yeah, it's not the most detailed plan we've ever seen. No, but and that was the one we could have really do. Yeah. yeah, small lot. People have been living there for a while. I just think this is a matter of them just not getting their paperwork done when they should have, and now that they want to sell it, they've got to have a certificate of compliance. Mm -hmm. It's been down since 96. Yeah. It's going in. I don't see any reason not, not to issue it. I'm saying that here's an opinion motion to issue a certificate of compliance for 36 Yard Street. Is that common to do that, Bob, without actually yeah. having access? You know, if if you want to wait, then let's wait two weeks until we can actually get to the backyard. Is there an urgency in the part of the homeowner? No, they've actually already closed on it. They, um, I, I wrote them a letter that said, you know, there was no reason to believe that they wouldn't get their COC, but, you know, that was up to the commission. Mm -hmm. So, so that I think that was enough to get through their closing. But there's nobody living in the residence now. I don't think so. So we have to schedule something. We'd have to schedule some real estate agent. Which we'll get back out there in two weeks. You want to do that? Yeah. I think it's due diligence. I think so too. I second that. Good call. Alright, so. Okay. Motion to continue for two weeks. Make that motion a motion to continue. Motion to continue in two weeks. Okay. So we'll re re revisit this the next meeting. And also request a site visit for the Saturday is the 24th. Yes. Yeah, I think it'll be the 24th will be the next Saturday yes. for site visit. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. So we can get on the property then. Unless there's a way for you to get there and take a look. I, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Um, you should call the real estate agent. Yeah, let me call them and see what they say. And then I'll email you guys if you want to do it. Maybe we can take some pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions or concerns? Let us know. Put it on the site, visit list. Okay. Okay. All right. So that one being tabled, I've continued. Other NOI. Also from Mr. Aruda, 148 Peckham Road, SE001. Do we have a file number for that one now? 
So while she's doing that, I'll keep her reading. Notice of intent was filed by Joshua Aruda, 148 Peckham Road, map 16, lot 7, 8 and 9 for retreat lot D. Previous hearing was E. The applicant proposes to construct a single family dwelling with associated septic system driveway grading and utilities on a common drive. The applicants are well presented by Jamie Bissonette of Zenith Consulting and LLC. The plan name is Subsurface Sewage Disposal System New Construction, dated August 2 of 2019. So Mr. Bissonette, for the Good evening again, Jamie Bissonette, Zenith Consulting Engineers. Um, so this property is just to the north of Lottie, uh, off of the common driveway that we were uh, discussing a few minutes ago. Uh, this area over here being the replication area. Um, so the applicant is proposing a uh, residential dwelling uh, with attached garage, uh, septic system, well, uh, roof drains on each side, uh, and driveway. Uh, the septic system is designed to conform to Title V and to the Christian and Board of Health uh, regulations. We've, I believe we've submitted to the Board of Health in both cases, uh, Pilate and on uh, We've tried to minimize disturbance using retaining walls uh, where it need be, uh, and also uh, keep the setbacks to the, the proposed, which are now under construction of existing plans. Uh, again, the, the wetland resource right now pitches from left to right, so this would be the high side coming down to the low side. Okay. So we already have erosion control on the other side of the road as part of the road work itself, and Josh has put in uh, a very heavy duty sits on, which is fantastic. It's blown in mulch uh, material, which is very, very heavy, very sturdy. Um, he also in areas has the straw wall incorporated into the secondary barrier. Um, but um, and on the back side, we also had the proposed limit of work for constructing of the common driveway with the associated um, drainage itself. Um, so uh, this upgrading <coughs> side, we're less concerned with erosion into the wetland. We're more concerned with the coming downhill uh, itself. So uh, we've tried to design this in a manner in which storm water coming down from the wetland area of gradient flows down and around into the storm things and continues just like on our original. Uh, common driveway design. Uh, I don't know if there's a heck of a lot more that I can say, but I'm happy to try to answer any questions you guys might have. All right. Um, we were out there Saturday. <coughs> we started silt fencing, so silt socks, silt fence. That was that was looking good. Mm -hmm. it was getting towed in there pretty well, um, especially after moving those. Hold it out of the way if necessary. So it looks like here too there's more <coughs> soil and stuff coming in than soil weaving, correct? Because you're not because you've got pitch and you get some part of it's gonna want to. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely soil weaving. Yeah, there's and there's gonna be nothing. But nothing that's being. the reason also for the retaining walls to minimize fill. So you Build retaining walls to. Uh... But again, I think where you're heading is the fact is when we're bringing in material, we're less likely to have long-term erosion than right. disturbing the existing. And and we agree. But you're you're right. In this front area where we need a more elevated platform to get to the house, where we're incorporating a terraced wall right. um, to avoid safety issues um, and also to minimize the you know, the um, impact that the film could have on the site. Just that that garage, proposed garage on the top of the hill there. Mm -hmm. That's very close to that silk fence. Right, seven and a half feet. Yes. So the the work to get the foundation in there for that garage will spill into that? No, it, they the work has to stay outside of that silt fence. And a seven and a half foot area is, is more than adequate to be able to install a frost wall with a footing. Footing's typically 24 inches. They'll overdig maybe, maybe two and a half feet on each side, two feet on each side. 
So I would expect the, the limit of excavation to be greater than four feet for that set saw. The soil is glacial till, so I would expect you're going to see, you go out there, you're going to see embankments like this. It's not, until you get down deep, according to the test plates that were done by Site Tech, uh, you don't get into the nice, good, coarser, sandy material. The stuff up top is very, very compact, very hard. So you don't need to bring a truck in on that side? Is that what you're saying? When you say a truck, the pump up? You bring in, well, it's going to be concrete, right? It is, yeah. They'll be able to bring the truck up to here, but this, this garage is actually sitting roughly on grade. So. This is also a general question about this one. Yes, yeah. um, you were saying that the water drains from behind the house towards the road, correct? Yeah, it, yeah, it so comes from the Where side. does Not the, the road water, the driveway, the <coughs> common yes. driveway, yeah. where does the water go when it hits the common driveway? Well, when it hits the common driveway right now, it's coming down towards this drainage. What we're, what we're using is we're trying to infiltrate, and then it has a, uh, a burn for a spillway over it. That was part of the drainage design with the common driveway itself. Um, so it's still coming from west to east. Mm -hmm. But as it comes down, in this case from behind from behind the house, it comes down and gets into this drain system. This was what was proposed on the common driveway, just like over in here. Any of this stuff in the front yard, the roof goes into the infiltration structures, and then this part in here and parts of the road come down and get into here, maximizes the infiltration, and then whatever gets above and beyond that spills over and goes down the rip route. Should go into laminar flow and go into the weapon. So then you have more standing water then? No. No, I don't think you're going to have any more standing water. We, we looked at that analysis in the planning board and the agent were okay with the analysis. I think I think Bill looked at that stuff too. That was part of the original file. Oh no, it is. That's We don't have a file number, so we can't put it on there, correct? Right. So you guys get to see me in two weeks? Mm -hmm. Or do you approve with the condition of the DT file number? Uh, how do we... Yeah, you usually don't, don't yeah, throw like it after we have, we Okay, have sure. first and yeah. um, just as with almost all good infiltration systems you have you try to maximize the amount that you can get into the ground but mm -hmm. understand that you need to have a full plan. Yeah. Just like the storm lessons. So we, we have those at the corners of the house so then they release and run of the grass if you ever got a monster storm. Mm -hmm. And George, you oh, have a paved driveway. That's what it says in the plan. Uh, same as Josh, the paper over on grade one of the other. All right, some of the questions I have. Anybody else for a moment? Okay, any others in two weeks? We'll ask them then. All right, so motion to continue in two weeks till we have a file number. I'm sure we'll have a file number right then. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank right. you. Appreciate Thank you. So that's it for that. Um, so that's it for the hearings and filings for this. The rest of this is just. Agent updates and those kinds of things. You're welcome to stay for that, but if you leave, we completely understand. <laughs> we won't take it personally. <laughs> it's not personal. Thank you very much. And then I have a dumb question of the day. You guys need anything further from us because my understanding is we don't need anything for us.
termination here. Just if the scope of work does change, you guys want to go inside and propose a new plan. Yeah. 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 Thank you all so much. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. All right, so that's that. So do you have updates for us, Mr. Yeah, I haven't done my Thanks, Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, um, first thing is uh, certified mail from um, from Beals and Thomas saying that they're going to survey some property. Uh, we have property on the on the Rochester line, belongs to the commission, right. and they're going to be surveying next door. So they wanted to tell us that they have the right to enter our land to survey. Where exactly is it? <coughs> it Oh, you know where it is? Oh. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about the, the town forest there, but that's uh, Fairhaven. Rochester side, I don't know where it is. Tell the truth. I thought Hill that Yeah, there's conservation back there. Quaker Way? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feather yeah, bed? Yeah, feather bed. Yeah, yeah. Yep. that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, where they're gonna they're gonna access that through? Through through the Rochester side, I would imagine. No. You need to get on the property, so okay. To locate monumentation on that property. Okay. Well, we still letting us know. So yeah, yeah, and there's a um, word here from the the law. So, and the next thing I have for you is a project by a Boy Scout, um, an Eagle Scout project. And he's got it all set up here in, in phases. There's four phases to this project. But it's for Davis Park, which is in the Lenten Lake. And, um, I feel a spot for a scout project. There's a, yeah. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a manageable size, I think. Mm -hmm. you know? Although this is a big project you because know, it's, it's yes, it's been it's really a mess right now. There's it's, actually a park there. Yeah. There is a park there. Trails yes, and there used to be a trail there that you could follow. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the yeah. circle. Park, isn't it? Hmm? I've always park, isn't it? I've always heard of the Davis Park. Why was Murphy the one who gave it to us? I don't know where it came from. Park here. Um, so the, you know, so they're going to do, uh, they're going to clear the, the wood out of the way and clear the trail, and then um, we're going to cut back the overgrowth, blah, blah blah blah. Phase three is picnic tables and a fire ring, and phase four is a trail sign with a wooden post. Fire ring. Yeah, just because it's there doesn't mean they can use it. <laughs> what, what's the, what's the, yeah, yeah. all those phases are, what are the dates? And they didn't give us any dates. Oh. This is um, Jim Merritt and Kevin Gallagher, the fire chief, are overseeing this project. So, Special uh, fire ring. <laughs> yeah, That's so right, so he might have an opinion about the fire ring. <laughs> just a little. Yeah. <laughs> but, and that's all I have that's um, pending. I'm working on the stormwater annual report, which is uh, due at the end of September, and it's 16 pages. So I take, let's take it up a little bit. That's the, the plan from this this area here, right? That's this. Uh, no, it's for the uh, the entire urbanized yeah. area of town, mm -hmm. and it's you know it's got to do with the. Um, you know, preventive maintenance and, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that goes with you. You need to, you need to inform four different groups, you know, residents, businesses, commercial developments, and um, commercial and institutional people, I guess. For expectations when they build? And developers. 
about yes for, about expectations. And so I have to send out flyers to these different groups and that kind of stuff. Wow. You know, right? Yeah, and a lot of stuff is going on the web page, and I need to learn how to do that. And, yeah. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff involved in it. And, uh, yeah. Actually, that reminds me that uh, the Wooded and Curran is helping us with some of the stormwater stuff, and they are planning to do a presentation at a planning board meeting. And um, I was hoping if I gave you guys enough enough time, maybe you might want to attend as well, just to get an idea, an overall idea of what the whole MS1 program is about, it. you know, what we're looking for yeah. and stuff. And this and stormwater is a big deal these days. So, but, uh, so that's what I've been working on a lot of. Therapeutic action. So, yeah, sometimes you just going to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, uh, you know, I guess I have questions about anything. Huh? Well, just let us know on that date. So. Mm. I will. I will. It's uh, usually they meet on Thursdays. It's usually the third or the fourth Thursday of the month. And that'll be, you know, they set it from one meeting to the next. So I won't know until they meet in August, if they meet in August when they meet in September. So, and it's possible if they don't meet in August that um, we'll put it up until October just to make sure that everybody's back in the mode and yeah. stuff, you know. So, but it will be probably a Thursday. Mm -hmm. Anybody else with business with you? Well, our next meeting is August 27th, and I'll also mention we still have an opening on the commission for a seventh commissioner which would give us a full complement of people. So if you're interested, contact the agent or in, and, uh, you know, sub to the select and then ask him for it. And I believe that's it. So with that being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned at 6.55.